thank you for attending. Welcome to the list building masterclass. Can I get some thumbs up from, from some of you people so that we know that you can hear me? Any thumbs up? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. My name is Ryan Dixon. I'm the vice president of sales and marketing at REI Print Mail and REI Smart Data. And so we are hosting this list building masterclass. Um, and I'm going to briefly um, explain why. REI Print Mail, if some of you don't know, um, is the largest REI print house in the nation. We do a lot of mail, millions of pieces of mail for real estate investors across the country. We've been doing that for a long time. Um, we are a 31-year-old company. And uh, we experience clients every day that bring us their lists. The problem is a lot of times they're terrible. And so they don't know how to pull a list. It's one of the most difficult things in real estate investing. I'm a real estate investor myself. I've pulled some pretty terrible lists. And as we grew as a company, we knew that data was a key part of the success of direct mail. And that's really what we've been focused on, getting more deals and more leads and a predictable lead flow for our clients. And because lists were such an important part, eventually we purchased REI Smart Data. We actually named it that. It was named something else before. But... We had already used this data for many years. I want to say it was about nine or 10 years. We had used this data and it was fantastic. Now, like many other list pulling systems out there, it's got a bunch of filters. You click them and you pick which filter you, uh, you need so that you can target um, whatever you want to target in your market, depending on, you know, whether you're doing fix and flip or wholesale or subject tos or novations or, you know, short term rentals, whatever, what have you. But you pick all these filters and you hope you got it right. And so what we do here at REI Print Mail is we offer free list building assistance for everyone. So any of our clients that come to us, you know, sometimes they say, you just pull the list. Let me tell you what my target is and you pull it. And they can buy the list from us or they can bring a list if they'd like it. About half and half do that. They bring the list. So when they do, a lot of times we experience um, different kinds of levels of results uh, because they don't know what they're doing when they're pulling the list. So we decided to do this, the list building masterclass. And so um, we are going to pull a few different lists today. Now, these filters can be used in pretty much any system. I will say that most of our names for filters are kind of like a lot of, you know, the other list building systems that are out there. Um, if not, you can probably figure it out. It's, it's you know, they're, they're, the naming conventions are pretty close um, to the same. Uh, but this list building masterclass has gotten pretty darn popular. Um, and we, we have a lot of people watching every month at this point. And so what we decided actually to do um, with this list building masterclass is for all of you, I know there's a lot of customers on here and you're already doing mailing campaigns. That's great. I'm glad you're here. Um, but for anyone that has not signed up for REI Smart Data, we are going to offer you something um, today. And for those of you customers that have already purchased a list with us, um, you can you can have this too, but it's going to be on your next campaign or your next purchase or whatever it is. But we're going to offer 5,000 free motivated seller leads pulled by a professional direct marketing coach. Um, uh, we're starting to offer that in some of our campaigns right now. And so we're going to offer that at the end of this session. And you're going to have a link. You click on it. You schedule a meeting with a direct marketing coach. They'll help you do exactly what I'm going to show you uh, and pull a list with you for you, you know, depending on how much time you have and what you want them to do. Um, and that's free of charge. All of that's free of charge. So pretty cool offering today. We hope that some of you take advantage of it, but I'm going to make you stay and watch and learn. Isn't that fun? And so without further ado, I'm going to get started and share my screen. So here we go. If I could get some thumbs up and let me know that um, can you guys see it? All right, fantastic. Here we are. Okay, so now what I would like while I am kind of explaining what, what the list that we're going to pull is, can you start in the chat telling me the markets that you operate in so that I can pull some live markets for you? Someone can actually see how many leads are in their market, which would be pretty cool. So if you could just go to chat and start putting that in there, that'd be great. 
Um, now, we are going to pull three lists today. We are going to pull our absentee list. We are going to pull a vacant list. And then we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to pull a list that can only be pulled out of here. And I know that's um, not usually what I do. If, if you have seen this uh, you know, webinar before, I usually do a tax delinquent. If we have time, I'll do it. But the fact is, is that there is a pre-made list in here called highly likely to sell, and it has been getting fantastic results. Everything that we do here is, is built on you getting more deals. You can tell when you go to our Google reviews, over 230 fantastic five-star reviews by real estate investors. If you haven't Googled us, please do. Um, and always check reviews before you give money to a marketing company. Um, the, the fact is, is that we are um, bent on getting you more deals and more leads. And so uh, rightfully so, I'm going to show you um, a pre-built list that is working really, really well uh, for our clients. Now, let's check here. What are we going to do? Um, all right. Looks like one of the first here. Let's do Dallas, Texas. We know we have enough data there. So let's go to Dallas, Texas. All right. Can everybody see that? Can everybody see Dallas here? Let's see. Now, we are not going to use a preset at first. As we can see, we've got all the zip codes here. And when we just put in the county, it kind of outlines everything here. And um, so we are going to motivated sellers. Now, because the vacant list is so popular and because this program was really known for vacant lists initially, um, it pre-selects. Uh, vacant. We're going to unclick that because we're doing absentee. And for those of you that don't know what an absentee property is, is basically I own somewhere other than I live. So a landlord, perfect explanation. I live in this house, but I own another house somewhere else. And I rent that out. That is an absentee owner. This is a great way. This is one of the most effective lists to use right now. Why? Because landlords want to sell that have been in the game a long time right now. Why do they want to sell? Because they've already made their money. They don't feel like going through another real estate cycle. And um, frankly, it's where we're getting most of the deals. So I want you to take a note that you should be sending right now mail to, if you're mailing or if you're marketing, if you're cold calling, if you're texting, doesn't matter what you're doing. We believe in all forms of marketing here that you should be focusing at least a little bit or a lot of it even on tired landlords. And we're going to show you how to pull that list right now. So we're going to exclude bank-owned properties. That's pretty common. We're going to exclude those because, well, we don't want to deal with the banks. It takes a long time to deal with banks, and we don't want to do that. We're going to omit properties currently active pending on the MLS because, frankly, we don't want to compete with agents. As I'm clicking things, you'll see them start to activate. These colors over here just mean that there is more data in these areas. So as the colors changes, there are different. You can see here, there's just the, you know, this gray is zero all the way up to 50,000, which is in a dark, dark, dark red. And so uh, let's keep going here. Exclude properties where the mailing and property address are the same. This is our absentee filter. Now, our absentee filter in most systems, actually, this one's a weird one, weird naming convention. We're actually changing it to the absentee button. But in most systems, you know, if you're using some other system out there building lists, then it is going to be called, you know, uh, non-owner occupied or absentee. OK, and so exclude properties with mailing and property address are the same, which is by definition an absentee property. Now, if I skip it, I don't like it, by the way. OK, so let's go to market value. This is really important, especially for a lot of my direct marketing coaches. Here we have a family of about six or seven direct marketing coaches. And what they do is they help our clients get more deals. Everyone's assigned one. It's free of charge. They give advice for the market so they can tell you what's working in your market so you don't have to guess. Well, um, one of the tactics that's working really well right now is direct offer. So we're sending offer checks to um, areas and saying, hey, you know, how about considering $185,000 for your home or $222,000 and, you know, and 47 cents or whatever for your home, right? Because people are responding to that more. Why? Probably because it's so noisy out there right now and they just want to cut through the BS and they want to negotiate.
So you get more calls if you do it. And a lot of our clients like that. And so because we are um, targeting a certain price point and because we need to know the offer that we're putting on the check, it's important to get the market value right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we want homes in Dallas uh, below 450000 Now that's a little higher than uh, some people might like, but I want you to consider something right now. The middle of the market, which is the medium home range, right? And most of us on this webinar have medium sized homes. We aren't buying and selling because some extreme amount, I think it's like 80% or something. I saw a stat the other day. It was crazy to believe I needed to look it up. But the fact is, is that the majority of the market is below 6% interest rates. So they're not moving because they don't want a higher interest rate. So that means that the middle is very stagnated, right? So a lot of our clients are focusing on the really, really painful, cheaper homes, right? And the really, really, you know, expensive homes. So that those areas are moving a lot because those areas have more pain, and that's really important. As a marketer, as a real estate investor, we invest in pain. Um, out of the 14 deals that I bought over the past, you know, couple, uh, sorry, probably about now about 12 months, um, all of them had pain of some kind, and I had to solve the problem. So we're going to do under 450,000 on the market rate equity. Let's talk about that a second. Now, typically, typically, 50 to 100 percent is pretty typical, right? If you want less competition, we need to start thinking about equity because you can do 26 to 50 percent because less investors play in that area. You can actually get uh, more deals, but they're thinner deals. You have to know how to work those deals because there's not as much meat on the bone, not as much equity. But one thing that you always, always, always must do if you get one thing out of this meeting, it is use include unknown equity. Include unknown equity. It is going to increase your phone calls. It is going to increase your deals. The fact is, is that unknown equity is old money. We have no idea. It's been paid off so long. We don't know if there's a second mortgage on it. We don't know how much is owed on it. All the paperwork got lost. We're a municipality. We don't know what we're doing. We're very unorganized. So we don't have that information. The fact is unknown equity is so important to your campaign and you should be using it. There is very few to none. I, I can't think of any of my direct marketing coaches that don't use unknown equity in almost every, every list below every situation. So definitely do that. So now notice that we're still at 20, we're at 20,000 here and we're going to see it break and go below that here eventually. Now let's do bedrooms and baths. Always, 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 when I say three always, you should write it down. Um, always, always, always use beds, baths, or square footage. You must use at least one of the three. If you don't, you will get inundated with phone calls about land because that's what you asked for. So we have to use beds, baths, or square footage. Now, here's the kicker. Some areas, some areas, they only report beds or baths. Some areas, like in parish, certain parishes in Louisiana, which is a fantastic response rate, by the way, fantastic response rate out there. Um, in Louisiana, you can only use square footage. Those municipalities don't even bother with beds and baths. Isn't that crazy? But that's true. That's what happens. Some of them. And so the fact is, is you need to figure out why, if you are building a list and you turn on a filter and you notice all of your data went away, all of it went away. You're like, well, that's crazy. It's broken. No, that just means that the municipality isn't reporting that thing. And so now all your data is gone because you picked something that wasn't very friendly in the area. So you have to find out what it is, unpick it, and then pick one of the other three, bedrooms, bathrooms, and square footage. If you don't do that, you're going to get a bunch of land. And now I happen to know Dallas County reports all of them. So we're going to go ahead and do two to five baths. Well, some people do two to four. 
Um, one, two, I'm sorry, two to, two to five bedrooms. That'd be a lot of bathrooms. Two to five bedrooms, one to three baths is what we're going to do. Now, I think it's really important that you all know that you need to cap the bottom and tops of your bed and bath filters, sometimes your square footage. Do not be lazy about your filters because if you are, then what's going to happen is that you're going to lose the probability of your marketing. The fact is, is that we market so that we can target something. We target it. You must target it. You must be targeted. And if you leave this crap to the left and the crap to the right of the filter that you're being lazy and you're not capping and you're not thinking about it, about what you would really target, or you're not being narrow enough, then what ends up happening is you, you decrease your probability. Right now, our direct marketing coaches are showing that in Dallas, that it takes somewhere around 25 to 30 phone calls to get a deal. And the fact is that it takes somewhere around three to 4,000 pieces to get that deal typically of mail, right? So if you pull a bad list and you leave the crap in there to the left and the right of your target, then that decreases your probability. This may be why your marketing isn't working. So we need to make sure and target. Um, square footage, let's make sure and at least limit the the bottom end. I want at least 900 square feet. I want at least 900 square feet. So let's see what that, what that brings us. Now, the rest of it, year built, let's go 1945. Now you could go, you, you know, the years, really, you want to know if you're a fix and flipper, this is important, right? Because you want to stay outside of certain um, time frames where there was a lot of problems, lead paint, right? Historical homes, things like that. Um, but for the most part, you know, 1945 or 1940s to, you know, 2005, pretty darn good. Um, why 2005? Well, look, you don't want new builds. Uh, I had, a, I had um, a client one time that insisted that in California that I didn't cap the top of the year built filter, even though I said, not a good idea, not a good idea. And he still wanted to do it. Well, when we did it, what? It, lo and behold, what did we get? A whole bunch of new builds. He said, yeah, but that's not, we were running a vacant list. They shouldn't be in there. Well, wait a minute. Were they vacant? Well, yeah, but they weren't sold yet. Doesn't matter. In certain areas, it doesn't matter. And so, so you want to cap the top of that year built so that you can, again, target a whole lot better. Property type, residential, pretty obvious. Now, I like single family. I like duplex, triplex, quadplex. I don't know who doesn't. They're fantastic. You can wholesale them. You can keep them. Um, you can, uh, you can, um, build, uh, you can build next to them a lot of times. So, so I always, uh, click on duplex, triplex, quadplex, because no matter what I can disposition the property. And I think that's pretty important. Now I'm also teaching a lesson here that notice how we haven't broke the 20,000. Now this view right here, we have a, we have a, an upgraded view being worked on where it can go higher than 20,000, but your immediate view is capped at 20,000. And so um, what we have to do is get down to the good stuff. So how do we do it? We're sitting here looking at 20,000 leads. We've, we've picked all of our filters. It's just not enough. I don't want 20,000. Let's say my budget's only $1,000 a month and I want to get a deal in 90 days. Pretty standard. You can do that inside of Dallas. So <clears throat> if that's the case, I have to use, and always at the end, I use years of ownership. Years of ownership is how you get down to your budget. That's how you lower the list. You want to lower the quantity of the list, but you want to lower it to a highly targeted market. That's really important. So you use years of ownership to do that. Now, let's just look for a second and say five years of ownership. It's probably not going to be enough, but let's take a look. Let's see. Now, sometimes I build this before so that these, this is another thing actually that we're updating um, where it's not going to do the spinny thing. Um, but uh, let's see here. So still 20,000, not enough. So I'm going to exit that and I'm going to put in a transaction range and I'm going to say that I want, let's just try 10 years of ownership. Okay. So that's somewhere around um what, uh, 2013. So we're going to click on the transaction range here and we are going to select 
um, all the way to the left here, we're, we're going to we're gonna go all the way because this date really doesn't matter. So I just always go to the end and I select the first. So 1900 on the first. Now I'm going to say that I'd like, let's do, there it is, 2013. Let's just do 2012, a little bit over. So let's do that. Then I'm going to select the first. I'm going to close. And it's going to do its thing. And hopefully, we get a nice targeted list. Now, if 10 years doesn't do it, I can always go to 15. I can always go to 30. Um, so see how we broke it there? Now we have 19,000. So we know that there's a lot more than that because we were just capped. So we need to go, we need to go more. Let's just say, let's just say I want, um, you know, I want something like 5,000 leads or something like that. So now what I do is I say, okay, 2012, let's just, let's just try 2,000. Let's just try that. That's 23 years of ownership. So as we increase ownership, years of ownership, theoretically, we're increasing the motivation, right? Now, look at how much that went down. Isn't that amazing? 3,862 good leads. 3,862 good leads in Dallas where there's so much data you can't see straight. But we were able to get it down to a budget that I wanted. And, and, and you know, I could take 3,862. Remember, I told you that about, about 4,000 pieces of mail. So this is a probable direct mail campaign for me. I'm a direct mail guy. I like, I like direct mail. I like it when people call me. I'm not the cold calling and texting type being stuck to a computer. I'd rather answer the phone at the supermarket and start negotiating. But um, that 3,862 would be a probable number. Now I could take that, split it up into three drops, and I can hit it over a 90-day period and wham, bam. I've got myself a deal and then I can increase to two deals a month, then three deals a month, then four deals, right? And I can grow my business from there. It's actually precisely how I did it. Um, but that is Dallas, Texas. So, and I know I speak fast, I apologize, but <laughs> can, um, can anyone or does anyone have any questions about what I just went over? And if, if, if so, feel free to put them in the chat there and uh, and I will answer it for you. And uh, meanwhile, I'm going to start looking here for, um, ooh, I haven't done that one in a while. Let's do that. Okay. Let's do this. Let me check. I'm going to do Hamden. Is it Hamden County, Massachusetts? Is it? There's a P in there, Hampton. Hampton. I don't think I'm saying that right. Um, okay, let's see if, if anybody. Um, nice guy. Says, All right. Hey, I don't have any questions, which means, which means I must be doing a really good job. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Appreciate that. Okay, so that is correct. Let's take a look at this now. What we're going to do here is we're going to pull a vacant list, a vacant list. Let's try that. All right. Motivated sellers, again, actually, all I have to do is refresh here. So let me refresh and then type that in again. Sorry, I missed a step, guys. Let's see. There we are. Okay, there we go. Motivated sellers. Now, we're going to keep this one selected. So now include only vacant. We only want our vacant properties. Wonderful list right now. Uh, wonderful list all the time, really. If it's vacant, we can usually get it at a cheaper price. Um, we can usually um, find more motivation in a vacant owner than, um, than you would uh, with a regular a single family homeowner that doesn't really have as many problems with their property. So we have include only vacants, exclude bank owned properties, omit properties currently active on the MLS. We already know that. We already went over that stuff. Now, this time we're not going to click exclude properties where the mailing and property address are the same because we want a nice mixture, a nice mixture of owner occupied and absentee because it's vacant. And because it's vacant, we know they're more motivated. What are they doing with the place? Just losing money. So we should be able to run in and buy it. 
All right. So now let's check our market value here. Now I'm not as updated with market values out there. Um, let's see if, let me just see what 500 is. Um, can we go ahead and mute who's ever in the, it's getting a little loud in the, Oh, I get it. <laughs> they muted me too. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So 1,280 vacants here in Hamden, Massachusetts. Now, now I've got 500,000 there. Um, I'm not sure if that's a if that's a good price or not. I would have to do some research. But let's do the same thing that we did before. We're going to do 51 to 74, 75 to 100 in equity. Now we're talking about equity, so 50 to 100 percent. But we always, always, always include unknown equity. Now, what do I do constantly on vacants? I always include 26 to 50%. Why? Well, because it's vacant. We already went over that. They're more motivated. They are more motivated than your average, than your average homeowner. So 26 to 50 is okay because I can create margin. I can create value. They have a lot to repair. So what do we have? 1,159. So it is up to you how, much, how many filters you want to put into um, you know, a, a vacant list. The fact is, is that it's vacant and they're highly motivated. Um, and so you, you have that going for you. The question is how many more? So as we're putting in things, so we put in bedrooms and you can see we got 644. So that means that most of the other ones above that, above the beds and baths, were vacant land. Okay. And so basically what we need to do is we need to um, depend on the 644. But from here, we need to make sure that uh, we don't filter ourselves out of a deal. There is um, a big worry uh, with that. The fact is, is that filtering and, and, um, uh, you know, sifting down your list is great to be targeted, but you can sift yourself right out of a deal because marketing is about 100%, not 100%, but gosh, 95% about probability. You need to be sending the right numbers. If you're not sending the right numbers, then you don't have a great probability of getting a deal and you have you stand a much, much higher risk of losing the money that you put into your marketing. And so this is usually a great list um, in a big city that's so big, like Dallas actually would have, could have been a good one, where you get a bunch of data and they're all vacant. That's great. Not too shabby. Um, the other is in areas like this, something to add to your absentee list, which uh, could be uh, really, really good as well. All right, I have to turn this off. Okay, so now that we've pulled the vacant, because the rest of this, I'm not, I don't really want to filter down. I'm okay with it. If it was built and it's older, I'm all right with it. Um, it's vacant. So I'm okay. Well, let's see, we can go ahead and do residential, but I don't know if that's, let's see if that's actually going to. So they're saying that some of them probably have some commercial use to them, about a hundred. So it depends if you're that kind of, uh, if you're that kind of investor or not. But Besides that, look, you really don't want to filter these vacants down too much from there. All right. So if we have all these filters active and I don't have any uh, years of ownership because they are vacant, I have 469. So that is a good representation of the vacants in Hamden County, Massachusetts. The next list, by the way, any questions about that? Any questions? I'm an investor in the Hampton Roads of Virginia and my process of building a buyer's list too. Both I do either both of you. Oh, I see. Got some got some cool conversations going on in the chat. Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do Raleigh. 
for the final list because that's what you guys are talking about. So let's look at it. And actually, I don't think it's rallying. I want to look up where. I don't think, I think what you mean is this. All right. So let's look at the pre-selected or the preset list here. This is the one I was telling you about. Highly likely to sell. So let's take a look. Now, I just selected this. Now, look, this is a very, very small list, but you can definitely massage the data here and you can figure out of all of these. What, so, it's, so right now what's happening is the preset filters in the back end are basically just saying all we have is 19. But I will tell you what highly likely to sell is we've got about 30 or 40 filters here and they are basically choosing um those that are that are vacant that are behind in taxes that are um that that have all these different things going wrong with them at the same time so if you want a filtered list then this is a great list to click on here but again probability add it to your list add it to your list don't just use that to market to, or if you're bored and you want to skip it, you can always skip trace inside of smart. It's a, it's a, it's a good price. It's easy to do. Um, and you could uh, cold call just those maybe, or, you know, something along those lines. So that being said, right now we've got absentee list, vacant list, highly likely to sell. So there's your three lists for tonight. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take any questions about anything. If you want if you want uh, to know how many pieces it takes to get a deal in your market, if you're talking about direct mail, if you want to um, uh, have me look up your market really quick and maybe do an absentee list, we have time to do it. Uh, if you have any general questions about list building, please put it in the chat. Um, but uh, if there's anything, any questions, please let me know. There's a whole bunch going on in the chat room. That's awesome. I'm glad people are making friends. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, no questions. Fantastic. Adam, put up the 5,000 free list building link. So what we're going to offer in case you guys like what you see and you want to do this, what I just did with you with a direct marketing coach here, and you don't want to pay for the leads or the subscription, then you have the ability um, to uh, click on the link that's coming and then they will, uh, you'll schedule a meeting with them and then they will build a list with you in your market. Sorry, am I seeing it? I'm not seeing it. Uh, the 5,000 free list. Let's give them 5,000 free leads. So they're posting the link right now. What you do is you click on it. You pick a time that works best for you. And you can actually go over the best advice in your market with your direct marketing coach. And then they're not only going to tell you that, they're going to tell you which mail pieces to use out there. They're going to tell you um, uh, what previously we've done in that area and compare that to what you should expect. So you know how many deals that you would get with X amount of pieces, what real expectations are in the market. So there it is right there. There it is. So if everybody can see it, HTTPS, the Calendly.com slash REI team slash FB dash 5K. So if you click on that, you uh, have the ability to book a meeting. And if you just don't, even if you don't want the free leads and you just want to talk to the free direct marketing coach, that's cool too. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to take the free stuff, but the free stuff is nice. It's nice. So um, let's see. Oh, we actually have one here. So anything in Suffolk County. Uh, let's see. I'm happy to look that up, James. Now we'll, um, how about a tax delinquent list? Always a fun one. 
Now, with tax delinquents, omit the MLS listing, but here's the deal about tax delinquent year is that you only want the ones that are late right now. But the data is usually about a year old. I mean, sorry, a year, a year late. So you don't have much for 2023, if anything. But in this whole area right here, we have 4,073 people that are tax delinquent since 2020. That says that there's probably an issue with their property. And we can go in here and we can actually, now it may not be with their property, but look, they're having trouble paying the bills. And so the tax link people know what I'm talking about. These are usually great targets. Um, and uh, this is nice for people that have the same spiel over and over again um, about, you know, we deal with things like taxes, free foreclosure, things like that. Um, and that is a, a, a fantastic way to get wholesale deals or fix and flips. Let's see here. Let's just see what we got. 3,238. Let's see if we lose any due to land. Look at now. We talked about this. Do you see what happened? Watch what happened there. Do you see the two bedrooms? If I remove it, watch what happens. I have 672 right now. But if I remove the bedrooms, 3,235. So exactly what I was telling you about is happening here in this area. Let's try square footage. Let's say we want 900 square feet. And let's see how many come off of the 3,235. Whoa. So we're having a problem with the square footage. That's crazy. Let's try bathrooms. Let's hope. Say two baths. Boom. Does everybody see that? When you are pulling lists, and you come across that. Not only are the bedrooms screwed up in Suffolk, New York, but also the square footage is. It's not being reported correctly, or they're not. They, they don't have correct APIs in their in their municipality software. And so, because that information is coming out wrong, then everything looked like there was there was nothing here. It looked like so any. Any investor pulling data here that doesn't know this is going to think that there's just not a lot of leads. There's just not a lot. So do you think you have less competition here? Yeah, because it's screwed up. So that's really, really important. Let's see here. Now, let's do the 2005. Nineteen. 35. So a lot of them. So this actually wouldn't be a bad list to go a little higher because look how many were newer. It's great to see the reactions to the filters, especially if you're doing things like subject to. So if you're finding, if you're finding properties in here that, um, that you go, wow, a lot of them were newer properties. That's a fantastic subject to deal, right? They're late on taxes, they're delinquent. And then you can find your subject to deals in there by taking over their payments. Instant equity, instant deals. Oh, shoot. Oh, guys, I just hit the button. Anyway, there was 600 of them um, after, after we put that last filter in. So I apologize. I just hit the button and the, and the whole screen went away. I hope everybody has learned something tonight. Um, and there is um, there is the link in the chat that allows you to book a meeting with us and get a free 5,000 leads for free, motivated seller leads. This is a $65 a month system at the cheapest, and there is an annual discount and there is um, there is a higher, instead of getting 10,000 leads a month, so 65 bucks is 10,000 leads a month. There's also an annual subscription where you can save a month uh, worth of money. There is a 20,000 um, uh, leads a month subscription. However, what we're offering is you don't pay anything. You just sign up and then one of our direct marketing coaches will help you pull a list. And then um, you can do what you want with the leads. Uh, but 
definitely learn about what your competition is doing in the market. Um, it is a fantastic opportunity. It's free. And I do not see why you wouldn't do it. So last chance, any questions? I know we're finishing about 15 minutes early, um, but usually I get more questions. So does anyone have any questions about what we went over tonight? And feel free at this point, you can just unmute yourself and talk. Are we, host, can we do that? Can they, can, can they unmute themselves and ask a question? Is that okay? Brian, this is Trisha. Um, Hi, I Trisha. I put a, um, a message in the chat. So I've been um, talking with a different um, rep from REI. Okay. Um, can I can I get the 5K lead offer with Corey if I sign on with him? Um. Yeah. If you if you haven't if you haven't signed up for anything yet meaning you haven't purchased any. So this is like any other sale, right? It starts right now. <laughs> so, okay. so if you, if you have purchased before, then no, you couldn't get it with that, but you can get it moving forward. Meaning okay. we'll, we'll put it in queue for you for the next order. Uh, you don't have to buy the data. You can just get the 5,000. Okay. Or he's a fantastic other... rep. You're in great hands. Yeah. And I had another question I asked um in the chat. Can you talk about how the process works if we send you a list we develop? Um, mm -hmm. So say if we pull co-violations mm -hmm. list from a local city or city or municipality. Municipality data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we want to utilize that to mm -hmm. access the owners. How does that work with your company? To access the owners, you mean to just mail well, I'm it? just sent, mailing out to the owners because, yeah, like, as long as you have the, you know, like like any other mailing campaign, you know, as long as you have the address and as long as you have the property address and the mailing address, we're okay. Um, now, you know, obviously, it, you you want things like first name, last name. You want things that are going to personalize your letter, right? That that helps with response. But technically, we can get along with just a few, you know, aspects like you know the mailing address, the you know the city, state, and zip, and that kind of thing for the property and the and the and the um, and the site address, meaning you know the target address that you're targeting plus the the owner's address that you're sending it to those are different a lot of times absentee good example but how does it work basically you send us the list we always run through national change of address and the cast system and municipalities are really bad at tracking data and a lot of times those get dinged pretty hard um, through the CAS system in the NCOA some are better than others but basically what happens is we check it to make sure that the list is good if it is really bad or maybe a lot of the addresses or coming back is incorrect, then we'll let you know. Um, but we do check that uh, with every list, but municipality lists can sometimes be rough. Um, so we process the list and we get you a proof. That's uh, pretty simple. Typical turnaround time is five days. If your data is really rough, it could take a little bit longer. Okay. And so does that also, will that also have this, um, the offers on the postcards or the mailers that you send out? If that's what you choose. If that, oh, you mean, so then what you're asking is how do we get values for something that already doesn't have values? That's what you're asking, right? Because well, if your list doesn't have market rate, is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is like you you, you usually send the market value and you kind of make an offer on the mail piece. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. would that same thing apply if I give you my list? Yeah, but you'll need values. You'll need market rates. So let me ask you a question. Okay. Does your list have market values in it? No, it just has. Okay. That's okay. I'm just, that's okay. I just want to tell you the process. Basically, you give it to us and then we go skip trace the market rate and we have oh. a software to do that. Okay. So add a couple days to the process, but we can do that for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah, so maybe plan on something like seven days. And obviously, if you're making changes to your mail piece, and I like this color and that color and this, and I want it to be this big, and I want it to say that and this. Look, uh, most of the time, those changes don't matter as much as you'd think, right? You know, what we do is, as human beings is we look at a mail piece or we look at a marketing piece and we go, I like that. Well, it doesn't matter what you like. It matters nothing what you like. It matters what's going to respond. Why does the ugly, you know, the the yellow ugly, yeah, yellow ugly card work? Why did it work for so long? Why did we go through a a series of pink postcards forever that that worked amazing? Is because at the time the public at large really responded to it. 
And what you're talking about, the tactic that you're talking about, people are really responding to right now. We don't know how long it'll last. But the fact is, is that don't get engulfed with making so many changes to the mail piece that you think that it's going to make a huge difference. Most of the time, it does not. Most of the time, it doesn't. There are some things like adding your email to a mail piece can hurt results, right? Adding adding a website can hurt results sometimes. And so you, you want to talk to your direct marketing coach about the area and you want to be sure that that you know um, what best to do in that area. Thanks. No problem. No problem. Any other questions? Who's next? Anyone? I had a question. Do you do sure. vacant land also? Yeah, we do. We send a few hundred thousand pieces. We don't do a, you know as much as we do single family residential, but we send a few hundred thousand pieces of uh, vacant land mailing every month. Um, so yeah. Yeah, we do that really well. What's your question about that? Uh, I'm just moving into vacant land area and mm -hmm. looking to determine what the best counties are to work with. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll give you the best advice that, that I can give you, and that is boring states, very boring states. Try <laughs> not to focus on all of the coastal states. And if you are, maybe stick to like a Louisiana or maybe stick to really boring coastal states that, that are having more issues. But the fact is, is that boring states are going to give you more like a five or 800 pieces per deal return rather than like, um, you know, trying to get vacant land in Texas or, or, or like, you know, like a, a Florida or something like that, where it takes two and 3000 pieces to get a, a land deal. The thing with land deals is they're easier to get usually less pieces of mail, but they're harder to turn over. So what you don't want to do when you're starting is spend all your money on marketing. Isn't that funny that we're a marketing company and we're telling you to spend less and be more strategic. That's because we want you to stick with us for a long time. The fact is, is that, that you should be doing you know, shorter spurts and boring states, and you should be sending a lot. You So you send a lot. So you send every week or you send every other week and get the consistency down. It's also pretty common with land mailers to, to send first class the very beginning and then send marketing mail as you go so that you can get leads coming in right away. Um, and then um, as you are sending marketing mail, which is a slower postage, you know, the post office takes its time delivering that you can you can kind of send those around the same time. And the first class comes in and you start getting phone calls right away. And then you can um, expect the uh, others to drop later at a cheaper price, about 20 cents uh, a piece less. So um, that's, that's, you know, good advice for, for land people. It's a very hot market. I think you'll do very well there. Um, as long as you apply yourself and like anything else, this is a, rela a relationship game. So solve their problem. Don't try to buy the real estate, solve the issue. That's really, really important. You know, okay. they, they may need to sell. Why? What are you going to do with the money? Right. Ask them questions like that, because they'll tell you once they visualize it and they see that you can solve their problem, then they choose you. OK, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? No, that's it. All right. That's all good. Well, we're well, sorry. We're, hey. Yeah. Sorry, Ryan. I missed the, the earlier part. I was in a, a work conference meeting. All good. Is, it, All good. is there any way to get the recording for this? Yeah, we're going to send out the recording. We do every time and we do it again. We'll do it again around this time next month, too. Awesome. Um, so, you know, uh, but but absolutely. Did you have any did you have any questions besides are you going to get the recording? No, that's it for now. It's since okay. I, I really right. missed it. Maybe maybe the recording will answer some of my questions. If not, I'll join the next session. And I have a call with one of your salespeople tomorrow. So Oh, great. Good. Yeah. And they'll and they'll be able to help you. And I and I want to point out they're definitely not salespeople. <laughs> they're they're here, they are here to to basically get you as many deals as possible and to make sure that your phone rings and um uh, and so uh so trust what they say, but ask a ton of questions and, and I am sure they're going to be able to help you. Um, and, uh, and, and good luck and happy hunting in your market. For sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Right Any... quick, Ryan. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. I'm not questioning the comment, but I, we've talked before I seen you, I'm doing, I'm going to do a combination of both. And I remember you mentioning stuff about vacant land and go and lease markets where it's least saturated. Yeah. A lot of courses, like you say, Florida mm -hmm. and Texas are oversaturated. Mm -hmm. I still had that list. I just got to find it and get organized, get crack-a-lacking. 
No, good. Yeah, that's really that's really important. That's really important. You know, to start, we got to start, right? <laughs> right, right. Trying to get my trying to get my trying to get my money right. I'm paying right. off a few things off debt, and one of them I'm about to pay off a car off after seven years. So, well, congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Get uh, you. whatever you do, get into the business. It's the best business in the world, and it and it creates freedom. And I love it. Right, I love it. And I'm then I'm and making I'll happen while, while I'm maintaining my my job still. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, it's like yeah, you're looking at it. That's what yeah. that's what I did. That's what I do. That's what I did. You know, and and um and you know me and my me and my wife will 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 end up having you know probably twenty five properties. Um, you know, by the end of the year. But before that, I wholesaled a bunch. I wholesaled a bunch. Wholesaling land and wholesaling real estate to start is a fantastic way to prime the engine. It really is. You got to get your marketing figured out. But if you can do that, which you don't have to crack the code, you just set a meeting with us, you figure it out, you get the advice. And then you initiate. And you initiate it on a budget that you can continue and do for a while. Not just, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this one shot. Don't do that. Don't give right, us right. your money it's if, continuous. if you're going to do I'm... one shot. Don't do it. Right. It's dangerous. It's right. we'd, rather be... you, we'd rather you keep the money, you know. Right. And I'm then spoken save to before and, and Philip. So I just, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to get my money right and have a couple of stumbling blocks and all that. And I'm trying to get things and get be uh, consistent, consistent, consistent. Because mm -hmm. that's what leads to deals. I just had a few stumbling blocks and hurdles I'm trying to overcome. That's all right. It makes us better, makes us stronger, and you'll come out on the other side and just whatever it takes, get into the business. That's what it takes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, Ryan. Yes. I was just wondering if, um, uh, do you do a lot of uh, small apartment uh, buildings? Uh, lists for that? Yeah. Duplex, triplex, quadplex, anything. No, no. Lar larger, larger, like uh, five to 20 or 20 to 50. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, commercial buildings, right? So right, commercial so, buildings. Yeah. yeah. Because anything, so for, for all the people listening and, and listening to his question, thank you for the question. Uh, uh, it is, um, it is considered commercial loans. That's what we're talking about. A commercial loan, if it's over four units. And, um, and so um, the uh, LoopNet and CoStar people, they own that data in the world, right? They own that data. And so the fact is, is yes, we got to deal with them. Yes, we provide you. It, it is not, you can't get it in the smart system that I've been talking about tonight, but you can absolutely get it from us. And you can absolutely talk to one of the direct marketing coaches, tell them that you want commercial units, say that I want between 20 and 50, the sweet spot, so that I'm not competing with the guys that are buying 150, 250, 500 unit buildings, right? I want the ones that they don't want, which is, you know, usually under a hundred. And so, so the fact is, is you can ask for that data and I believe it's 37 cents a unit. So it's not the cheapest data but again you just get one deal right you know you buy a thousand right. pieces of data or you buy something like that so three four five hundred bucks you get the data you mail to it a few times all you need is one deal and you know how big those deals are right there you massive. guys know uh the, the best or better markets to look for small uh, apartment buildings you know um, I would probably suggest that you talk to the coach about that. I'm not going to answer that now. What I would do is um, talk with the coach, definitely book a meeting, definitely book a meeting, talk with the coach, tell him that Ryan said he wants to be involved. We can see what we can do to help. We have a lot of resources. We have a lot of resources. So it really depends on what you're going to do with the building and what kind of the tenants they're going to be, right? Obviously, I, I own almost 100% Section 8. Right. So so that's a different that's a different uh, use. Right. right. Than 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 a short term rental apartment building where everybody is in for six months because they're renting solely to nurses. You know, so that so it's different. It depends on what you're going to do with it to, to the market. But I'm, I'm uh, happy to, to help you. And I'm sure the direct marketing coach will be able to steer you in the right direction um, and um, just tell him Ryan said he wants to be involved. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Anyone else? All right. Wonderful. Well, this was a great, um, great question and answer session. You guys came out swinging at the end. Nobody had any questions. And now all of a sudden you guys had a bazillion questions. That was fantastic. That's where people get value is finding out what is stumping other people. And so that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, and uh, I am going to go ahead and end it here. 
um, because uh, my wife's going to kill me if I don't get home. And the fact is, is that I had a blast and I'm, and I'm uh, uh, loving doing these webinars. So we're going to do it again next month. The recording is going to be sent to you. If you have not scrolled up in the chat, found the link, click the link, booked a meeting, then you're doing yourself an injustice because it's free and it's always nice to know what your competition is doing better than you. So uh, we're happy to talk that through with you. Thank you very much, everyone. I had a blast. Have a wonderful evening and happy hunting.